Um, welcome to Vasiliana Hub. Today is our session on the 6th day of February, where we are hosting mediation service center leaders to give a review of the Civil Procedure Act, Cap 21, Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020, uh, a document which we are referring to as the Kenya Post Naivasha Mediation Rules Draft 1. It was, in, it was put in circulation on 15th of January um, in the year 2021. The purpose of uh, this uh, session with Mediation Service Center leaders is for them to give their contributions, their critique, and also construct on it, to share with us what they find effective in the document, to share with us what should be in it, but perhaps is not in it, uh, what's missing, and also to provide general value-add contribution. This is uh, coming as a result of the document that was circulated for mediators to read and also to give their uh, general feedback. So we have with us uh, Tabitha Rutere of Covenant Mediators and Counseling, who will be giving us uh, a review of the document, which we have said uh, we are referring to as the Kenya Post Naivasha Draft 1 Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020. We will start off with the words of our national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Welcome, Madam Tabitha Rutere of Covenant Mediators and Counseling Center for your review of the Civil Procedure Act, CAP 21, Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020. My name is Wangari Kabiru, the convener Wasiliana Hub. Karibu sana, Mediator Tabitha Rutere. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Good evening to you, Mediator Tabitha Rutere. Please proceed. You can hear me now, please. Please proceed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tabitha Rutere. Uh, I am the I'm the CEO and the founder of Covenant Mediators and the Counseling Center. But you know, we are about four of us uh, from different backgrounds. We have a lawyer. We have a psychologist. We have a, a sign language expert, and uh, I am the counselor. But all of us are mediators, professional mediators. A covenant mediators and the counseling center is registered with NITA, and uh, we offer other, other courses apart from mediation. We offer security, we offer psychological counseling training, and uh, we, also, we, also we also offer um, mentorship and the mediation training. Uh, we are we are based in Akuru, and we have been in operation for the last about three three four years, and we are glad to be associated with the Wasiliana Hub. Actually, was Wasiliana Hub has really been um, a platform for us to to move around and to move far. We are thankful. We are really grateful. Uh, we had a meeting the three of us. We had the lawyer, the psychologist, and myself. The sign language expert was not able to attend, but she sent in her uh, presentation, her contribution. And uh, we, uh, we made a document that we shall present after this, perhaps to us, Liana, we shall send it in a PDF form. Um, yes, so uh, I was saying um, we had a meeting, the three of us, the psychologist, the, the lawyer, and myself, the sign language expert was not available, but she sent in her, uh, her contribution. And we have made a document that we'll be sending to us, Diana Hub, uh, about a 10 page document that, you, uh, that has our, our, our thoughts and ideas and contribution. But I can highlight a few what is in the document. Uh, one is a, we have appreciated that the, the private mediation has finally been accepted and recognized by the judiciary and uh, including uh, uh, private mediation centers in the document is really a big step for the for the not only for the profession of mediation but also for the for the country as a whole uh, court annexed mediation 
uh, our, our the other the other the other area for perhaps that you can look into that we found of concern is that if uh, this is got annex mediation plus uh, private mediation perhaps i don't know but we can look at how we can use the name court annex mediation perhaps we can change it to something like um, uh, like uh, maybe Kenya Kenya mediation practice or something like that, because when we talk of court annex mediation, to us we felt like it is closing out some uh, the private mediation practice. Uh, the other the other one is we have we can have. I'm just giving an overview before I get to the to the particular uh, uh, rules to the particular rules. Uh, rules. We thought we also thought the we can come up with a way to have a formal engagement between mediators and the judiciary. Currently, the court annex mediators, I, I highly doubt if we, some of us know if we are on contract, if we are on, if we are judicial staff, we really are, not many of us know the engagement. All we know is that you've been accredited and work for the judiciary, but at what terms, Yes, we know we 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 are we work and we are paid, but I wish it can be more clearer. The engagement is it? Is it a contract? Are we staff? Are we dependent? What is our position? Those are some of the the, the overview um, uh, um, highlights that we came we came uh, we thought about. But to go down to the particular rules, we looked at number eleven where mediators under the program, perhaps we can check on uh, number 11. Number 11, um, yes, we have number uh, one to five. We were thinking how can, can a way of rewarding mediators be included in that, in that in that um, article 11, perhaps we have mediators who are hardworking. We have others who are very innovative. We have definitely we have mediators who work outside outside the outside the framework of the of the mediation of, of the mediation. How can the judiciary be able to kind of uh, appreciate them? Uh, perhaps the other one I can just quickly highlight is number 15: attendance at the, at the mediation. Number 15. Number 15. Yes, number 15. We are, we are, yes, the, 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 the attendance at the mediation. Uh, yes, after the parties, uh, yes, we can see the parties who have who do, who do not attend. Maybe can are we able to get a penalty for the uncooperative parties? How can we have the party that that attended feel, make them feel appreciated or recognized for what they did? Can the party that did not did not attend have a penalty to pay the part the parties that that turned up? Uh -huh. Number 16 also, in case of private mediation sessions, courts should cooperate and allow for a venue. Okay, this is where we were feeling where there is a, a private mediation session going on and the mediator feels that there are, um, there are some security threats. Perhaps the court can be can allow, as much as this is not court next mediation, the court can be able to allow this private mediator use the court premises for the purpose of security. But then the mediator should give perhaps a seven days notice before the actual date for mediation. Uh, number 20, the role of an advocate of the mediation. Number 20. Yes, the mediator. Okay, there are there are um, there at times as much as we have the rules in place, we may have some advocates not comply. Like uh, currently, the situation in the courts, I believe those who are practicing uh, court mediators, 
have, most of them may have experienced, what should the mediator do in the event that the advocate adamantere refuses to comply? Maybe, maybe the, the rules can come up with, with the way forward for the mediator because the mediator can be in a fix if the, the advocate has not complied and um, this article 20 seems to be silent about that. Let's check uh, 22, consequences for non-compliance. 22, consequences for non-compliance. Uh, we thought the non-complying party as it has as it, it is already written in the in the in the in the, in the, um, in the rules non complying party should pay the complying party some penalty in the in our case in the current case there's supposed to be 100000 but i don't but i think it hasn't been um, implemented or effected by the courts but actually there is there is a provision where if the party doesn't turn up the parties should be able to pay the other party 100,000 as penalty. And this perhaps can be supervised by the court. The court should ensure that that penalty has been paid to the complying party. That was another proposal. Number 29, enforcement of settlement agreements. Can jump to number 29. As I said, quite a number we have put it in the in the document, which we can circulate with the permission of the uh, Osiliana Hub. Uh, number twenty nine. Parties can. Yes, um, we felt that if by practice, from the from practice we have seen where uh, court annex mediation has been conducted, a full agreement has been reached, and the parties come back looking for the mediator to request them, help them implement. For example, where where the, in the succession matters where where you, you realize uh, maybe it is in a polygamous family. There are about three, four, or five families that, that are supposed to subdivide some land. You realize that the five families are not able to, to implement what they agreed, and they seek for help from this mediator to supervise the process. I don't know how that can be looked into or put or put across, but I don't know if the mediator can be allowed. Currently, the position is they construct the mediator, but at personal level as a private business now. When a mediator is through mediating the, the court annexed cases, uh, the court annexed case and the agreement is reached, the parties are given the contract, but again, they come back on their private uh, capacity and now request the mediator to handle the, 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 the matter at the private level. But is there a way that we can have a rule stating that if the parties are free to reach out to the mediator to help them complete or implement the agreement, it can be also uh, helpful. Because, because by practice, as even if you refuse it, the, quite a number of uh, disputants come back seeking for the mediator to help them be able to implement what they agreed. Because at times you realize in the polygamous families, there is a lot of disagreement and um, things may not be done as agreed at the, at the mediation agreement. Uh, we can also look at number 34, payment of mediators. I had my brother, friend, Fred, a friend committee talk about it, but I think we also had some things more to put in. Number 34. Yeah, we had two issues where 34 to the scale of payment of mediators fee shall be determined by the committee and shall be reviewed from time to time. We were feeling that it could be determined by the committee in consultation with the mediators. Because as my brother said, really I think mediators need to have a say about how much they are paid and how they should be paid. Because the current state is really, is really, is really very discouraging. I, th I feel mediators should be involved in, the, in their payment, in the, in the setting up of their pay and 
the mode of uh, the, the, the period of payment. We also, yes, number two, we felt that um, if there is a, a, a full agreement and then another case is non compliant, should they be paid the same? Okay. Number three, the current payment of 20,000 to be reviewed up one to about 40,000 to start with as the mediators get uh, sit down to really evaluate um, what is worth to be paid. As my brother said, we really handle matters that are of quite large amounts. Sometimes the work is, is quite much. You realize you can be able to handle one case more than five times. So when you look at the five times you go to court, your transport and whatever you spend is actually over and above the 20,000 that is paid. So if really you have five cases and all the five cases you are spending more than that in a year, you realize that really you may not be making much for yourself. As much as we, we, as much as we may not be, be, be money focused, we also need to benefit from, the, from, the, from what we do. It would be important if perhaps we can, we can spend 5,000 and then you can save the 15 or spend 10 and then save the 10. But if you are using more than 20,000, and then this 20,000 again takes one year before you get it, it can be very discouraging for the mediators. Uh, quite a number of uh, our, our suggestions and the critic and, and, and the uh, suggest, suggestions will be read in our document. That, that is just the overview I thought I should, I can read here now. And uh, Wangari, I think that's all for what we were to share now, but uh, from the document, there's quite a lot. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tabitha Rutere. I am the founder and the chairperson of uh, Covenant Meditas and the Counseling Center. We are based in Nakuru. We are, at, we are registered with NITA and we are a team of four. Uh, I am a psychological counselor. I've also done criminology. We also have uh, Rahab Gino, who is a psychologist from Park University. She's a lecturer at Park University. She's, a, she's the one teach, who handles the, psycholo the psychological um, training for the company. We have Evren O'Wall, who is a high court advocate who handles the legal bit of the training of the company. We also have uh, Dr. Josephine Waeni, who is the sign language expert and um, a member of the training team. And uh, we are glad to also let you know that besides mediation, we train sec uh, private security, we train psychological counseling, we mentor, we offer men mentorship programs, we train uh, mediators, we also train the hearing challenged people. And uh, yes, that is what we do. And we are glad to be associated with the Wasiliana Hub and we are very grateful. Thank you. I wish to thank you, uh, Madam Tabitha Rutere from Covenant uh, Mediators and Counseling Center for your contribution to the ongoing discussion that uh, is uh, related to the court annexed uh, mediation rules, which is the Civil Procedures Act, Cap 21, Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020. Today we have been receiving uh, contributions uh, uh, from uh, Mediation Service Center leaders in Kenya, giving us a review of the Kenya uh, post naivasha draft one of the Court Annex Mediation Rules 2020. Uh, Tabitha Rutere from uh, Covenant uh, Mediation has uh, given us um, several highlights uh, from, from their team. Uh, number one, uh, with regard to the recognition of uh, private mediation, and that is considered to be a positive, uh, positive move. Number two uh, is a contribution that there could be a need to change the identity or the brand of the court annex mediation to, for example, Kenya mediation practice or an identity that now uh, takes into consideration the fact that uh, with private mediation that is not handled necessarily at the courts, uh, 
that this is not necessarily court annexed um, uh, mediation, perhaps court connected. Um, then um, also, uh, the contribution that there is need for clarity for mediators, uh, whether are they staff, are they on contract, or what is the form of engagement uh, with uh, the judiciary. Other contributions uh, are with regard to the reward system for mediators, if there can be an incentive based or a rewarding system um, for mediators based on whether it's performance, hard work, or innovativeness. Uh, then. Uh, um, an area that uh, Covenant Mediators has also in and, and uh, Counseling Center has also introduced is where or emphasize on is with regard to clarity on penalties for non attendance and also uh, for non adherence to the agreement when an agreement has been made. And uh, there has also been a very specific uh, uh, recommendation uh, with regard to the, uh, the courts. Uh, being the ones who supervise uh, for parties who uh, attend a mediation and the other party does not attend a mediation for a penalty and the court supervises for the party who attended to actually be paid, um, uh, to pay an amount, for example, 100,000. Then there's a contribution with regard to the fact that if the courts can open up so that uh, private mediation may be able to take place within the premises of the courts and this the contribution may be arising from the fact that we are seeing that in the country that the, that the judiciary of Kenya is opening up courts uh, of, uh, in many in, in place in several places in the country. Then probably then mediation mediators could be able to make you uh, good use of them, and also in the events of situations such as uh, there's a security uh, issue with a mediation uh, or or a, a mediation or a matter that um, a mediator is handling. Um, the role of advocates uh, then and uh, with regard and back again also to issues of uh, how the mediation is taking place and compliance, uh, clarity with regard to uh, what happens if there is non-compliance. Then uh, when it comes to payment of mediators, uh, the, the determination, uh, there is a committee that has been mentioned. However, there is no mention of mediators being involved uh, in matters that have been determined by the committee. There is a specific recommendation that uh, uh, the 20,000 shillings that is, that is paid to the mediators in the meantime is reviewed to an amount, for instance, as 40,000 as this as the other discussions to be able to come up with uh, better remuneration for uh, mediators who are involved uh, with the courts. So once again, we thank the, uh, Madam Tabitha Rutere and uh, the team at uh, uh, Covenant Mediators and Counseling Centers Center for their contribution as part of the Mediation Service Center leaders uh, in Kenya who are giving a review of the Kenya post naivasha Draft 1 called Annex Mediation Rules, or as uh, it's formally titled, the Civil Procedure Act, Cap 21, called Annex Mediation Rules 2020. At this juncture, we will close our session uh, with the words of the National Anthem. My name is Wangare Kabiru. I'm the convener of Yenahab, a community of professional mediators, and advancing the use and also the status of mediation centers as part of the mediation and resolution centers program. We give you thanks for joining us and the words of our national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwengao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. God bless you and thank you for joining us.